On a gorgeous Thursday evening on Stanford University's campus, we welcome you to Laird Q. Kagan Stadium, and we welcome you to the 2022 Stanford men's soccer season. And the season begins with an intriguing matchup between one team who made the NCAA tournament last year and the other one who's trying to get back there, the Stanford Cardinal hosting the Villanova Wildcats out of the Big East. Great to have you with us here on Pac-12 Insider. I'm Troy Clarity alongside Jordan Watkins. And Jordan, so many new faces, so many new things that we expect to see for this Stanford squad. So many losses out the door, a lot of guys turning pro and doing big things on the next level. That means opportunities for a lot of young men on this year's squad. Yeah, and I think you, you nailed it, Troy. You talked about a team trying to get back to the tournament, a team that was just there last year. And even with a lot of the production that left, we were going to talk about a lot of the forwards that have moved on for Stanford. They do have some experience in the backside, and maybe that's what they're going to try to use to create some more chances this year, especially with some of the young talent that we'll probably see later on in this match too. Yeah, Keegan Tingey and Keegan Hughes forming the backbone of the Stanford squad this year, forming part of the leadership core. And look, let's face it, as long as Jeremy Gunn, who's now in his 10th year as the head coach for the Stanford men's soccer program, as long as he's running the show, this is going to have Questions relatively for Stanford along the back line. More questions up front. We will go through those throughout the course of the show. Meanwhile, the Villanova Wildcats coming off of a season in which they won 12 games last year, including beating Vermont in the first round of the NCAA tournament for their first ever NCAA tournament win. They lost to Notre Dame in the following round, but a lot of those guys still returning from last year's squad for the Wildcats. And even though it's a new season, I'm sure they have to be feeling pretty good heading into 2022. Well, that's the thing. Tom Carlin, ever since he's been at Villanova, has had this program going in the right direction all-time program leader in wins and we won't see one of those big factors for them it looks like tonight Lion McKinnon who was their big star coming in preseason all Big East we didn't see him in warm-ups like you mentioned a lot of those same players are back so it's going to be interesting to see. This is a good matchup for Stanford to start things off. No doubt about it. And the razor-thin margins, I think both of these teams are perfect illustrations based on their seasons last year on, on just how fine the margins are and just how fickle this sport in particular can be. Last year, Stanford, on the, on the wrong end of many of those margins, that hadn't really been the story for, up, for much of its dynastic run. Meanwhile, Villanova gave up a higher goals for average than they, than they gave up uh, goals against. So yet they are able to find ways, win 12 matches, and get into the NCAA tournament. So a lot of those fine margins that didn't fall in Stanford's way last year fell Villanova's way this year. But that was then. This is now as the 2022 season is about to begin. Let's give you the starting 11 for both squads, beginning with the visiting Villanova Wildcats out of the Big East. Kent Dickey is in goal for the Wildcats, have been waiting in the wings behind Carson Williams, but this year he gets his shot. Across the back, it is Marcus Brennis, Victor Benedictson, Jack Bonus, and Anthony Cousins Jr. Across the midfield, Gray Ricca, Jorge Garcia, Josh Bellews, and Brendan Johns. He did not play at all last year, injured his leg in the preseason, now playing his first game, competitive ball game, in two full seasons now. And up front for the Wildcats, it is Akinjide, you can call him Jide, Owujo, and Dominic Syriax. No Liam McKinnon. McKinnon, second team all Big East last year as a forward for the Wildcats. Was not participating in warm-ups. Heck, he was spending some time down below us talking to a few fans while the rest of the team was warming up. So no McKinnon for the Wildcats. Starting 11 for the Stanford Cardinal. We will go through that as we go along. On a 74-degree evening, we are underway from Kagan. The Cardinal and the Wildcats. Enjoy the match. 
Starting 11 for Stanford. In goal is Matt Frank across the back. Will Cleary, the freshman. Keegan Tingey and Keegan Hughes and Noah Adnan. Across the midfield, Will Riley, Mark Fisher, Cam Silly, and Fletcher Bank, another freshman in the starting lineup. Carlo Agostinelli and Jackson Kill starting up front for the Cardinal. Yeah, one of the two, the Bank, the bank Twins. I'll tell you what, Fletcher, you talked about finding even with the youth, you talked about someone who is able to create opportunities coming out of his high school year, was top ten in the country in assists per game just a year ago. His brother Palmer also on the squad. Here's Fletcher Bank, the tackle, out of bounds, Stanford ball. Carl starting quickly, still with the dummy run, kill, hangs on to it. Back to Keegan Tingy for a moment. Back to Keegan Hughes, the captain center back. And also, as of this exact moment, Stanford's active goal scoring leader. How about that, your center back has scored more goals than anybody on the team. He's four, three of them coming in the 2019 campaign. Well, as we talked about, I mean, now you, you look at this Stanford team, they gotta, you got to find a way to replace that offensive power from Zach Ryan, who's now with the New York Red Bulls, and of course with Sandy Buda and Will Richmond, who are doing things, of course, with the earthquakes. Again, not easier said than done, of course, right? Yep. Gabe Segal in the Bundesliga League in Germany. Falls towards Noah Adnan. Headed forward. Trying to turn, sends it in Kill's direction. But Dickey clears that one. Ball bouncing past Josh Bellews. Watch for him, number four for Villanova. In the midfield, six foot five. As that one falls down towards Fletcher Bank, the snap header, not enough on it, but not quite enough reaction time. Jackson kill right there, but didn't quite have enough reaction to get there quite in time. Tell you what, though, you like to see that. Stanford, the first one that gets a really good look. And again, one of those young players we talked about being up front was in and on it early. Fletcher Bank, not enough on the header. And Jackson Kill, not quick enough necessarily in the anticipatory department. Kill has it now. Jackson Kill, sophomore from San Diego. Did not play last year. It's taken to the turf for his trouble. Stanford to throw it in. Stanford went 6-6-6 six, six, and six last year. 2-4-4 four, and four in Pac-12 play. That was a fourth place finish. It was Stanford's first time missing the NCAA since 2012. Along the way, they suffered their first loss to UCLA since 2013. And their first loss to San Diego State since 2011. Corner kick coming up. That fourth place finish is right where they're projected to finish this year again, too. Corner kick Stanford at number 10, Carlo Agostinelli. Oregon State and Washington tied atop the Pac-12 preseason poll, followed by UCLA. Promises to be a dogfight once we get in the conference season. We've just begun the entire season here tonight. Corner kick coming up. The right foot towards the front post. Trickles along the back. Nobody there. Silly. Touch line, pokes it, and traffic sent away. Oh Bellews, all six foot five of them. Able to get that one out of harm's way. Meanwhile, Cardinal player down in the goal box. Yeah, Kent Dinky went to go punch that ball out when it came in on the cross, and I think he might have gotten the top of the head of Jackson Kill. Kill needing a moment and being tended to up on his feet. Jackson Kill, Cathedral Catholic High School down in San Diego. Among their alumni, Casey Tuhill, former Stanford football player. Last I checked, he's still with Washington. Yeah, I believe so. For Stanford football kicking off in, what, nine days? Just across the street from us here. From Dickey, Hughes. Too far away from Fletcher Bank. Marcus Brennis to throw it in. Brennis missed much of last season for the Wildcats with injury. Did play 
in nine games, starting eight of them. Here's Fletcher Bank, a step ahead and taking control of things. Trying to catch up to it. Left foot center. Perhaps a bit too inaccurate. So that one heads towards the top of the 18. Yeah, you saw Kill there. He made the decision to just let it go on through. Throwing for Villanova. Villanova 12, 8, and 1 last year. 5, 4, and 1 tied for fourth in the Big East. They were picked to finish 11th in the Big East preseason poll last year. It certainly opened up a lot of eyes, especially early on in conference play, their first 4 and 0 start in Big East play in program history. And we're able to parlay some close shaves, some close wins into an NCAA tournament berth, which in the Big East, that's not easy to do. Not at all. And, and another thing, too, you talk about that, that goal differential and, and how many they scored versus how many they allowed. It wasn't even that, too, Troy. It's a lot, of, a lot of those games, especially the big ones down the stretch, it took closer to that last bit of the game to really get things going and either get that tying goal or that game-winning goal. So they had a, a flair for the dramatic for sure. Talking to Villanova Wildcats head coach Tom Carlin, he said, look, we had a, had a good approach that helped us be on the right end of things. Also helped that they were pretty tough to score against. Yes. Coming down to Fletcher Bank, but sent away. Towards Awujo, now the Wildcats off and running. Have not seen much play on this half of the field as Awujo gets bumped from behind by Hughes. Hughes whistled. Shadows lengthening, sun setting beyond the coastal foothills behind the Stanford campus, another beautiful day. Silly gets whistled. Spent, as he sent Jorge Garcia spilling to the turf. Bellews had it for a moment. Six foot five from Toronto. Toronto, a city that you would think would produce a lot of hockey players, and it does. It also produces a cheer of soccer, soccer players, too. Yeah, they had a pretty good article about that with Bellews on, on the website where he was talking about that. Of course, you think about the success and so we have a player down. Can't see the number. Dominic Syriax yeah. helps his teammate up to his feet. Meanwhile, Matt Frank going down, going low, and preventing the shot from going in. It looks like it might have been Anthony Cousins Jr. who was down. But how often do you see in over a lot of different sports where if you have a successful or entertaining pro team in the area it also leads towards the the youth and the talent that grows up from there i mean even talk about toronto think about the basketball talent that started to grow from there because of how popular the raptors were yep. and now you think about with what toronto does in mls as well you can say it's part of the same thing well in toronto of course doesn't hurt that it's a truly global city yes it is so many different communities in the city of toronto which is a great town love toronto figure out an excuse to get back there at some point. See if we can schedule a non-conference Stanford football game there or something. Uh, Worth a shot. The rate things are going. No, I'll just stop right there. <laughs> Agostinelli with the free kick. Curling towards Dickey. Kent Dickey, the grad student from Richmond, Virginia. The Villanova keeper. Awujo shielded off the ball. Whistle on the tackle. Poke towards Fletcher Bank. Ahead, too far ahead. Jackson Kill lurking in the area. When you talk about Kent Dick, you got to like stories like his where you have the players, especially nowadays a lot of these sports in college, you have the transfer portal, people leave early. But, no, you said he waited his time. Obviously, they had a very, very talented goalie in Carson Williams. But even last year when Dickey had to come on, he was pretty effective, only gave up. One goal in three matches and actually had his first clean sheet against Penn State, too. Yep. Came on when Williams got assessed a red card. Filled in for him. Got the start against Butler. And got the start at Northwestern in rainy conditions and came away victorious in both of them. Carlin says 
Dickey does well handling things in the air. We've already seen that today. That one's on the ground, and it's in for the score! Jackson Kill off the rebound, and Stanford strikes first. One, nil, Cardinal. It's easy to say that the Cardinal have been the more aggressive team to start this match off. And as always, Troy, good things can happen when you get the ball to the mouth of the goal, and that's exactly what happened there. And a good job by Jackson Kill following up on the rebound. Kill in traffic, putting it through, and that is the first goal of Jackson Kill's career. A lot is going to be placed on that young man's plate is – yeah, Jordan, you and I talked about at the start of the show, the big question that a lot of people are going to have about this program, those outside of it anyway, are going to be, you know, where are the goals going to come from without Zach Ryan and Oseni Buda, Jackson Kill perhaps providing an early answer. And that's the thing. I, I think that what I've been pleased even in the first nine minutes of this match so far, we've seen how this front is not afraid to attack. And again, like I said, a lot of times you get something to the front of the goal, you never know what can happen. Miscommunication for Villanova. Cardinal trying to take advantage. Outside, Riley. That one absorbed by Cousins. Who tries to get a little bit of a shove on his way out the door. Hesitating. Cousins pokes it away, but Stanford gets it back. That one's right on frame. Dickey goes down and gets it. Another note with that, too. I'm sure even if you have the inexperience up front, how – more loose and relaxed are you to know that even if you do have that one misplay on the attack, you have this great back line that's going to be there to help you out. When you're hard to score against, that opens up a lot of doors for you. It keeps you in ball games. Ask Villanova. That's a big formula from them that they were able to use in 2021. Awujo offside. <laughs> I believe that was Keegan Ting who called that one the whole way. Offside, offside, offside. Then the flag came up from the linesman here on the near side. Yeah, you mentioned Villanova on the on the defensive side of things, too. I mean, usually I would say it's not a recipe for success that you want to repeat being outshot over 120 times in a season, but that's exactly what happened with Villanova last year. But, again, when it mattered and when they needed those big goals, they were able to get them. Villanova opponents with 69 more corner kicks than the Wildcats got last year. That's playing a lot of defense. Agostinelli. On the ground, too far ahead of Fletcher Bank. So far, closing in on 11 minutes of ball, much of this match has been played on Villanova's defensive end. Yeah, possession's definitely been tilted towards one side of the, of the pitch right now. Stanford being the aggressor, that's not necessarily anything new. We've Certainly become accustomed to that over the years. The feed kept on the ground. Dickey able to get away, get in front of that one. Wildcats trying to mount some semblance of an attack. That to this point in the match has, has not materialized. Now, plenty of time left in this one, clearly, as we just got going. Awujo makes the adjustment. Falls to a teammate on the far side. Cleaned up by the freshman, Will Cleary. Cleary, the freshman from Windsor, Connecticut. A center midfielder by trade, but has been at right back in the preseason. And that's where he gets the start to begin the regular season. Jorge Garcia. Jorge Garcia with the corner kick, the first one of the night for Villanova. And the only player on Villanova from last year who was able to get a PK besides Lyon McKinnon, and it was a big one too. It was a game winner against Hartford. Stanford able to get out of harm's way there. And Gostinelli hangs on to it. What a run. Doesn't have numbers. One-on-one. -on -one, poked out of bounds, giving the Stanford attack and a chance here, a chance here. Well, Agostinelli doing quite well with that run, as you as you mentioned, Jordan, and doing well enough to give Sanford a, a chance to, to keep this going here. In the 
corner. Nice. The roll. Has some space. Switches field. Track down. Brennis on the spot there. Continue to throw it in. Yeah, Villanova last year, six for six on penalty kicks. Five of them off the foot of Liam McKinnon, who, in case you're just now joining us, is not playing for Villanova tonight. For undisclosed reasons, did not participate in, in warm-ups with the rest of the Villanova squad. Agostinelli has Will Riley short. Carlo Agostinelli, the redshirt junior from Paris, France. Towards the back post, Dickey with the punch out. Shane DeFlores was in the mix. No, that was Jackson Kill. Sometimes 19 and 13 can be easy <laughs> to mix up. What we were talking about earlier, too, before the match, Troy, about the Stanford home kits. Usually, remember, they used to have the, the more of the stripes on the backside as yeah. well. It's a little easier to read this year, but, again, sometimes still a little tough as they're somewhat small. The cross on the ground, nobody home. As Fletcher Bank was playing closer to the keeper, but no one on the back post. Cleary adjusts, sends it back. Cousins watches it bounce out of bounds. Off of Ujo. Stanford defense has been a step ahead so far. Yeah, they have. And, and, you know, they almost remind me to an extent a lot as that was almost a dangerous pass. But they remind me a good bit of a hockey team, Troy, if you will, that is a man down. So the other team's on a power play where even if something gets close, they have no problem just clearing it out, just reset the defense. Good luck trying to get it, do anything against us when we're all set up. Brennis towards the penalty spot. Sent away. It was Adnan. Wildcats trying again. Back to Bellews. Not often you see a six foot five guy on the soccer pitch, much less in the midfield. Can be a big weapon on set pieces in particular. And they have a couple of guys on this team too that are pretty good at getting some dangerous balls in the middle. Brennis backing up off of Fletcher Bank. Just over 15 minutes in. Great to have you with us here on Pac-12 Insider. Troy Clarity, Jordan Watkins. Pac-12 men's soccer season opener. As all six teams in the conference are in action tonight. So far, so good for Stanford right now. Cardinal on top of Villanova, 1-0. A goal in the 10th minute by Jackson Kill off the rebound. I haven't seen a whole lot of action on this end of the pitch. Jack Bonus to throw it in. Junior from Newtown, Pennsylvania. And maybe a bit too much jostling at the front of the six for the referee's liking. Jack Bonus to throw it in. He was productive in both of Villanova's meetings against Creighton last year. Had a goal in the regular season matchup and an assist in the Big East semis. It had, to, had a throw in, actually, that, that led to that goal. Matt Frank, vocal, calling for it and claiming it. Frank, the fifth-year senior from Bloomfield, Michigan, became the starting keeper last year. Jeremy Gunn praises his maturity. Garcia knocked from behind. Cam Silly saying, are, are you sure? That's the second time I think he's been blown for a, for a call. Towards the corner. Kept in bounds. And a bit of a shove. Whistle against Villanova. I believe that was Awujo, perhaps Brendan jo Brandon Johns in the area as well. Yep, as we mentioned, it's hard to get good position in anything with Kinga Hughes is back there. Hughes, the senior from Heath, Ohio, all Pac-12 honorable mention last year. And 
and then a long succession of terrific center backs for Stanford. He brings the thump. Tackles he makes can be heard all over the 650 area code. That one somehow slides through everyone. Trying to win the race. Dickey claims it at the very edge of the 18. Yes, he was. Wow. Heard some of the Stanford reserves, too, trying to appeal to one of the officials here. Maybe he wasn't still inside that line. Off Tingy's head. That one was coming down towards Gray Ricca for Villanova. Ricca, senior from Bell Mead, New Jersey. Villanova coached by Tom Carlin. He is the Wildcats' all-time leader in wins, entering his 15th season, running the show. A record of 116, 117, and 24. They had a big-time run at Arcadia, too, before he got up to Villanova. They won three Pennsylvania Athletic Conference titles in his time there. Villanova just outside of Philadelphia. Team got in late Tuesday night. And they're staying here for the weekend. They head over to Berkeley to face the Bears on Sunday. Right to Frank. Villanova hasn't had too many options, and their attackers haven't had too much room to operate on. Yeah, not a bad effort, though, from Benedictson trying to head that one onto the middle. But as you mentioned, Matt Frank was right on it. Wildcats out of the Big East, which is a fine, fine soccer conference. Providence picked to win it this year, but you also got to deal with squads like Creighton. Georgetown won yep. the whole thing a couple years ago in 2019. At least the way the coaches are trying to predict it, they think it's going to be a big time two-way race between those two for that top spot. Poked right to Dickey. Attack from Riley. It was actually Agostinelli. Perhaps a bit more weight on the ball would have allowed for a spill and a rebound and given Jackson Kill a chance for his second goal. And that'd be exactly the same way he got the first one. Garcia from behind, the whistle blown. Stanford switching fields. Back to Adnan from Gaithersburg, Maryland, just outside of D.C. Villanova trying to up the pressure here. Yep. Boy, Bank has been anticipatory, although... He and Agostinelli kind of crossed paths there, and not necessarily in the best of ways. Yeah, that might have cost him an opportunity because Will Riley was making a really good run, but again, with Agostinelli and Bank running right into each other, kind of closed that window. First game of the year. Coming down, Hughes off target. Ting, check that. Yeah, terrific ball that even gave Tingy a shot at it. Well, already six shots for Stanford in this first half. Just a year ago, they were right under 15 for per game. So, of course, if things were to stay on pace, they're going to pass by that by a long shot. Hughes and Awujo locked up. And the whistle goes in Villanova's direction. Yeah, Stanford second in shots per game, second in corner kicks last year. Fourth in goals for average. And something else that might be a bit hidden in there as well, Stanford, Stanford opponents attempted seven penalty kicks. Cardinal with only one 
And that came very late in the year. You know, part of that, too, you talk about being aggressive on offense. Well, Stanford's also very aggressive on defense. They also led the pack in fouls. But the best part about it is even with those seven attempts, only three of them were converted. Yep. Matt Frank calling for that one and getting there before Johns could. Good distribution. It's one of the strong points. Fletcher Bank has been busy so far tonight. Pauses. Has Tingy overlapping. Tingy stops on a dime, keeps it in bounds. The shot oh. absorbed. Holy smokes, Dominic Syriax. Boy, that one was an absolute laser. Yeah, I had to flinch on that one. But I tell you what, you got to see some of the senior leadership from Keegan Tingy there. The whole time when Fletcher Bank was – over here with the one-on-one, -on -one, he was telling him to hold it, hold it, hold it, so he could get back up on the attack as well. And that was well set up. Yes. But Villanova, Syriax in the right place at the right time, no matter how painful it might have been. And if you ask him, he might have been in the wrong place at the right time. Moments like that maybe make me glad I'm up here instead of instead of down there. Also make me glad I played a sport with pads. <laughs> Turn to kill. Brennis goes to ground. It doesn't quite work out for him. Bank can't hang on. Agostinelli. Now Cam Silly with space and time. Stanford trying from the opposite flank. Will Cleary, the freshman. Back to Mark Fisher. Fisher, the 2020. Pac-12 freshman of the year from Michigan. Bellews helps clean that up. Tom Carlin calls Josh Bellews the fireman of the midfield. Sells us down, covers mistakes, puts out fires. Bellews helping to do that there. Awujo, nice ball to himself. To the touchline. And they couldn't find it. Frank sizing it up, goes up and gets it. Yeah, that was such an interesting looking play there. I, at first it was looked like Jorge Garcia just couldn't get his timing down because at the same time, because he couldn't, almost looked like he tried to make a dummy run with it. You even saw Wujo get so frustrated that there wasn't a shot on goal there. Stanford might have a chance for one here, though. Cardinal doing a fantastic job winning balls. Agostinelli, back post. Not quite. Stays in bound. Fisher Shields. Fletcher Bank on the opposite side of the field from where he's been. Looking for an opening. Finding Agostinelli. Waiting. Getting it back. But no one moving towards the corner. I think Agostinelli thought that maybe Tingy was going to make that run to the corner. Again. First game of the season. Yep. This is this is not a finished product. I asked Jeremy Gunn talking to him before the match. All right, how many questions do you still have left about this squad? And he, he just chuckled for a good solid 20 seconds. Now, Troy, maybe there's another fan base in the Bay Area that you also might want to remind that that's still really early. <laughs> not not to get a little too over. Get too over concerned about what they do or don't see. Some fa some fan bases in the pros are better at panicking <laughs> than others. Yeah, they don't they don't they didn't seem too faithful if you go off Twitter if you, if, yeah. if that didn't give away which fan fa fan base yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah. One nothing Stanford. Jackson Kill, nine minutes in, getting the first goal of his Cardinal career. Field now completely in shadows. As the lights are starting to take more and more of an effect. As Bellews heads to the turf, whistle goes against the Cardinal. And Troy, you had the right idea pregame, so I know you like to sneak over to that other side while the sun is still out. <laughs> It's, 
it's amazing the temperature differential oh, yes. between the side of Kagan Stadium that we're on, where most of the seating is located, and the side of Kagan Stadium where the actual press box is and where the more premium seating is located. It feels like it could be about 15, 20 degree difference. Will Riley has to come off. Yeah, I think he got cut, yep. so trainer Brian White going to patch that up. So Shane DeFlores comes in for Stanford. Meanwhile, Luke Pompliano comes in for Villanova. DeFlores making his regular season debut. Did not play last year. He did score in Stanford's exhibition against USF. That one is in traffic. And Frank able to go down and get that one. Big collision, friendly fire between two Stanford players inside the 18, but looks like everybody's okay. Yeah, I think that was Benedictson who was trying to go up and make something happen there too for Villanova. Victor Benedictson, the senior from Iceland. Great story. He was originally going to sign a pro contract in Sweden, but he got noticed by Villanova at a showcase. So Tom Carlin, the Wildcats head coach, flew out to Iceland, met Victor and his mom at an airport coffee shop for about 90 minutes. And in that 90 minutes, Carlin was able to convince Victor, and more importantly, his mom, because his mom's there like, wait, you Victor's go. A, a pretty high-energy kid. He's going to be over in the States. I'm kind of worried about what might happen to him over there. So it was more of a sell job on the mom. But convinced him to sign with Villanova. And then Tom got back on the plane after about 90 minutes and flew back to the States. Well, that's the thing about it, too. Whenever, whenever it comes to recruiting, it's always, you always have to get the mom. <laughs> and always be closing. Yes. And, and there's certainly a lot of international recruiting that, that has to be done in this sport. Especially for, you know, certain programs. Trying to find it, the Gostinelli waits, oh. slides it towards the Flores. But Villanova a step ahead. And perhaps a foul called there. Now you mentioned one thing, Troy. I remember when Stanford was getting ready to play, I believe it was Santa Barbara, UC Santa Barbara last year. I was talking to one of their coaches before that, and they said the same thing. That is where a lot of the recruiting, that, that's where you have to win, is overseas in Europe right now. Creighton came here a few years ago and seemed like half of their roster That's right. was international. Bounces well out of bounds. 30 minutes in, one nothing Stanford. Jackson Kill scoring in the 10th minute. Troy Clarity and Jordan Watkins here on Pac-12 Insider. And shout out to the guys with Pac-12 Insider back up in the studio, Eric and Jaime. Got to see them yesterday. We're getting the new production assistants ready to go for football season. First show is next Thursday. Yeah, happens fast. Yes, it does. Might have bounced off of Bonus's upper body. That is not legal in this sport, but not called. And substitutions coming on for both teams with Jackson Kill. Coming off for the Cardinal. That Layden Purchase, I believe. Purchase, the junior from Denver. Played in 16 games last year. Had a good preseason, according to Jeremy Gunn. Worked hard last year, but was just unlucky at times. And, you know, hey, sometimes that happens, especially in this sport. Fletcher Bank all over Syriac's back. to the far side. Sliding and winning it back, Agostinelli. Towards purchase, Agostinelli, one touch, wide of the post. <laughs> All I can do is point to the heavens, but I tell you what, even to make it that close on that, that was a very hard pass from very close by, so you had to be ready to shoot that one in a heartbeat and still almost got it on frame. Substitutions. For Villanova, Awujo and Johns come off. 
Bumpy Saunders and Vincent Petrera come in. Petrera, a sophomore from Salisbury, Maryland. Saunders, a sophomore from Brooklyn, New York. Tom Carlin calls him a scoring machine. Hello, Brooklyn. Saunders has it. Bellius to the far side. Unforced error. Not the cleanest stretch of, of ball for Villanova. Stanford to throw it in again. You just have to think after a certain standpoint, the Stanford defense just gets in your head where sometimes you think you might not have as much time as you, ha as you actually do or as much space as you actually do. Tingy has Fletcher Bank outside. Step over. Nice defense. Yeah, well shielded. About to see one of the freshmen for the Cardinal who we could see a lot of up front as Agostinelli comes off and Liam Doyle, the freshman from Tokyo, Japan, comes in. The book on Doyle, according to Jeremy Gunn, pace, power, terrific finisher. I think that's Jeremy's ways of saying, I, I like this kid up front and what he can do and what he can bring to this program. Yeah, my, my translation is that boy good. <laughs> Situational soccer, as I believe DeFloris has just gone into the book for the Cardinal. Yeah, it was either he, uh, it was either him or Silly. I saw Cam Silly react to it, putting his hands over his face, and again he had been whistled a couple times before that. Yeah, it's going to be on Cam Silly. Set pieces is where Villanova has done some good work, or at least last year. Set pieces on defense is where Stanford has done a lot of its best work over the last decade. Saunders to start. Left foot. Doesn't really have a chance. And that Frank barely had to move. Yeah. And maybe a bit too much pace on that ball, too. Saunders tight roping. Oh, he knew he he knew it went over the line too. He even stopped for a second. <laughs> Linesman says play on. First ever meeting between Stanford and Villanova in men's soccer. Swept out of bounds. Stanford to throw it in. to look but I would imagine I, I, I have a feeling that Villanova is the first Big East team to visit here since Creighton came here in 2017. That was that weekend where that massive heat wave was here in the Bay Area. It was a double header. The women played first and it was 106 degrees at kickoff. On the ground, rebound oh, wow. right on frame. Boy, Leighton Purchase was in the right spot but Dickey rose to the challenge. Bellews Balls to Stanford instead. Fletcher Bank. Bank, Tingy, in the air. Bank trying to win it back. Outside. Back to Cleary. High poker towards the top of the 18. Tingy. Fisher. Fletcher Banks showing for it and getting it. Not enough on that one. Doyle, back to Fisher. Stanford switching field. That was a double header. I forget who Stanford women's soccer played in that first game, but it was 106 degrees at kick. 
108 degrees by halftime. And in the second game, the Stanford men's squad played Creighton. And it was quote-unquote cooler. It was probably sometime <laughs> in the 90s by the time things got underway there. But then Creighton stayed in the Bay Area like Villanova's doing this weekend. And they played Cal a couple days later. And I remember talking to Cal head coach Kevin Grimes about that because Creighton just came in and, and really showed Cal some things. But Kevin Grimes, the then the Bears head coach, pointed out, look, you know, Creighton was staying in the hotel. They had air conditioning, right? <laughs> you know, our guys were staying in their dorms. No air conditioning, no sleep at all. Yeah, I remember that summer well. I mean, really, all that whole summer going into August – it was just unbearably hot. I mean, I, I think it was my second graduation, so that, you you know, we're talking about June, and even then, my tie by the end of graduation was a completely different color than when it started because oh, I was sweating so much. Yuck. Meanwhile, tough play by Fisher, I believe, who helped put a stop to that, whatever Villanova had brewing. Nope, that was Cam Silly. Check that. The senior from Alamo, California, De La Salle High School. An athletic program of oh yes of reputation, especially in Northern California. Saunders makes the adjustment. Wow. Swept away, tingy, cool, calm, collected. But Fletcher Bank has had a lot of touches tonight. He, he does, and I think the part that's so impressive with the two is you, you talk about a freshman and a senior on this side. The combination play that he's had with Keegan Tingey a couple of times now tonight has been very impressive on the offensive end. Yeah, a lot of touches, and many of them have been positive. Yes. Chasing it down. Outside the 18, no whistle. You know, oh. Whoops. Sometimes a freshman can be in his very first regular season game getting a lot of touches, and sometimes that can be a not-so-positive experience. How about he got that one off to, to Keegan Hughes? Doyle turning. Shooting. Spills off of Dickey, but he's able to claim it. Well, can't fault Doyle for taking a crack at that one. Maybe he would have liked to have had a bit more pace and a bit more weight on the ball, but still made... Dickie think a little bit. And even with that, it, that was almost like a almost like a perfectly placed changeup, if you will. Didn't come with velocity, but I tell you what, he put that in the right spot that really made Ken Dickey go for it. Dickey's fourth save of the night. Matt Frank has been credited with three saves to this point. Bellius. And we've seen that a couple times tonight from the Wildcats where they try to build something over on that far flank and just an unforced error with an errant pass that isn't near anybody in a white jersey. Well, you can even hear Jeremy Gunn from here a lot of times too when they're on that side. It's almost like he's, he's calling on the dogs where all of a sudden you see that pressure increase and that's where those unforced, er unforced errors have come into play. Turn, fights off one, slides it right to Keegan Hughes. A touch. Here comes Purchase. Out to Fletcher Bank. Picture perfect tackle. Brennis wins that battle. That might be the best defensive effort we've seen in the night for Villanova so far. Inside five minutes to go first half. Cardinal of controlled run of play. All right now they're ahead 1-0 on the scoreboard. Off the ref. So we'll do it again. <laughs> nice handles, ref. Not bad. I tell you what, sometimes just in the heat of the moment, you can't help yourself. You kind of go back to the old playing routes. Hey, the ball finds you. Bonus. Hughes. Chest trap.
Cleary clearing that out. Mm. Purchase with the slip, lost his footing. Bell used gave him a little, sh little sh shoulder bump in there too. Cardinal building. Fletcher bank. Lost track of it. Centers it. And that's unfortunate. Yep, the handball called on the Cardinal in the box. Well, unfortunate in a couple of respects. One, Bank with that little hesitation, yep. maybe lost track of where the ball truly was, trying to negotiate the ball, the touch line, and see where everybody was, head towards the goal mouth. And the other one, the handball inside the 18. How about the decision, though, from Cam Silly? He really held on to that run till the last minute, really make the defenders commit to him, which gave more room out to Bank on the outside. Veteran play. Silly in the mix. Saunders. Fancy footwork. Gets out of trouble. The floor is closing in on that one. Picked away cleanly. Now coolly and calmly playing it back. And now all the way back to Frank. Closing in on two minutes to go first half. Intercepted. Brennis got there first. Will this one stay in bounds? No. Nope. Oh. oh, heads up. <laughs> oh, no. You all right down there, little buddy? Oh, man. I'll tell you what, he's taking it like a champ, though. Yep. Will Riley and Zach Bohane. At least Bohane coming into the match. And, yes, Will Riley is returning. Riley got cut earlier in the match. So he has been cleaned up a bit. Zach Bohane, a freshman from Monte Sereno, California, not too far away from here. He went to Los Altos High School. And another one of the freshmen that is sure to see a lot of playing time this season for the Cardinal. Now I'm just checking out Ball Boy. I, I, I think this is Mom who's over there now just to make sure he's okay. Syriax tries to turn, has to take it back instead. There is one, one minute remaining in the first half. To this defense, they just don't give you anything. They make it tough. Wildcat goes down. Getting back up to his feet. Clock is moving. Less than 30 seconds to go. Everyone organizing. Ten seconds Ten, left. Nine, eight, seven. Backing six, up. Five. On four, the ground. Three. Two, Tries to get it to Saunders. One. Far post two wide. And the first half club comes to a close. Stanford ahead of Villanova, one nil. The difference so far, a goal by Jackson Kill at the exact nine minute mark, the first of his career. And a goal that, to this point, kind of summarizes how this game has gone so far. Kill off the rebound, capitalizing off of, of, of Villanova's mistake. And Stanford just a step ahead of the Wildcats in the first 45 minutes on both ends of the pitch. Yeah, it's been really impressive. And what we talked about a little bit in the open as well, we know Stanford's going to be very, very tough to break defensively. And Villanova really got a crash course of that in that first half. Even if Stanford had that one missed pass or that one missed cue offensively, right away they're getting the ball right back looking to attack again. Second half from Kagan Stadium will begin in about 15 minutes or so. We're in the Pac-12 men's soccer season opener. Stanford 1, Villanova 0. You're watching it all on Pac-12 Insider. A season ago. 27 yellows, two reds as well. 
Ball in. Bell Hughes, as you could expect, was right there. And it's sent out. It's going to be a corner. Again, Troy, when you, when you have that 6-5 frame in there, it doesn't even have to be the perfect ball. Just get it anywhere around yep. the net, and you have to like your chances. Yep. And Bellius has always been yeah. tall, but at around age 15, he grew 7 to 8 inches and had to grow into that body because of the longer legs and the higher center of gravity. Oh, I know those growing pains were no joke. Here's the reacts. He's very dangerous, creating opportunities with, from corners. It's something that Tom Carlin identified. That's going to play it out to Cousins, and he's going to try to send it in, but right there, blocking it right back out for another corner with Shane DeFlores. Yeah, and that's going to win him a, a lot of, of, of applause from his teammates, and especially if they take a look at the film of this one. Uh, that's certainly going to get some notice as well. De Flores sacrificing his body to prevent the opportunity for Villanova. The Syriax again, a lot of traffic in front of Matt Frank. That's exactly where they're going to go. And there's headed on close towards the goal. I believe that was Bell Hughes, yep. but couldn't get it on target. A goal kick for Stanford. A couple substitutions coming in for Villanova. As Gray Ricca comes back in. And again, a good sign here for Villanova. Jide Owujo comes back in. Well, coming up on 15 minutes left, you're down 1 0. You got to start thinking of emptying the chamber a little bit if you're, if you're Villanova. Well, you see, it looks like they're already planning on doing it. This pressure already lined up to be pretty high. And now, because of that, Matt Frank's going to tell everybody to move on back. Staying back, though, just in case here on this far, on this near side, Will Cleary, and that's exactly where Frank will go with it. Collision in the middle. There's a shot. A good strike on goal from Fletcher Bank. Good save by Dickey. Yeah, had a good look, but Dickey up to the challenge. That was well done on both sides. Yeah, we talked about it. Fletcher Bank really known for his passing ability coming in. 1.8 assists per game last year. Top 10 in the country in the high school ranks. It's probably a good time to remind folks of probably the biggest rule change in college soccer this year. No more overtime. Yep. That's a thing of the past. We just play 90. And fouls. One of the Villanova defenders going over the back. postseason, if a game is tied after 90 minutes, there's no golden goal. They go ahead and they play the full two-minute overtime, the full two 10-minute overtime periods. And then if they need to go to penalty kicks after that, they will. But overtime a thing of the past? And the golden goal a thing of the past? A lot of moving parts in college soccer. Of course, there's that one that a, a lot of coaches that I've talked to, I know they're really hoping for, get that split season. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. that, that, that's that last one uh, that they're really pushing for, and they've been doing it for a few years now. Ball sent in, purchase, that cleared away. Who's going to come away with it on the left side? It's going to be a throw in for Villanova. We approach minute number 78 here on the campus of Stanford University on Pac-12 Insider. Awuju. Some fancy footwork to keep off the Stanford defenders. I remember we told you last year Villanova definitely had a Thrill for the dramatic. It's getting around that time of the match now as that's going to go out of play for a goal kick. Close to Ricca, but, but not close enough. It's kept tailing away from him. Special shout-out to those of you back on the East Coast. Yeah, yeah. Staying up late and watching us here on Pac-12 Insider. We certainly appreciate that. 
better living through modern technology. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, you talk about that. Villanova themselves made a partnership this year, talking about that modern technology. I know a lot of their athletics going to be on Flow Sports. And I think they said, too, if you're a student, you can get a, a discounted subscription on that as well. And one of the cool things about Pac-12 Insider, a free service. So many different avenues and ways to watch. Whether it's through the Pac-12 Now app. You have a Roku like myself, or a Redbox. The uh, list goes on and on. Yep, Roku's got the hookup. Yep. Here comes an opportunity for Villanova and that last touch from Pompliano. It's a little too strong on the inside, and Hughes was there to send it away. He's also a bit the worst for wear and is going to need a moment. May have connected with the opponent's lower leg, maybe not knees perhaps. That's never a pleasant feeling. Hughes played in only one of the two preseason scrimmages. Long throw. Head it toward the near post, sent right back out. Will we see another ball go in? We will. Anybody home? Hughes. Yes, it is. Keegan Hughes. <laughs> so this is the most consistent pressure you've seen Villanova have in that Stanford box, but a handball yep. will end that threat. A good job for the Stanford defensive. Holden Fort. Yeah, Awujo with just an escort no matter where he goes. And he was trying to fight off a couple of different bodies and trying to settle the ball, and the ball took a bounce that he was not expecting it to take. And yet another opportunity for Villanova falls by the wayside. Ball being headed around. It's now down on the feet of DeFlores. He's met with a couple of Wildcats and still has it on his foot, my goodness. How did he do that? Keeps possession for the Cardinal. As Fletcher Bank tried to keep it, but couldn't. It's a throw in for Villanova. Boy, DeFlores with delightful footwork. At one point, he beat two one-on-ones, it looked like, but then he was basically in a, in a triangle, if you will. I thought there was no way he'd get out of it. The next thing you know, there he is with the ball still. And what a challenge there for Villanova. Now they'll come the other way. Can they build something here? The answer will be no. This is a good job. Will Cleary getting over there, and it's going to be maintained with Villanova. As I, I look like for me, Cleary might have had the last touch from the Stanford contingent here, thought otherwise. Wait, who's paying us to do this game? Villanova clearly was the last time. <laughs> no. <laughs> Kidding. It's like the old Boston Celtics radio calls, right? Uh. Some of Bob Murphy's old calls for, for Stanford men's basketball back in the day. Well, this ball purchase gave Chase, couldn't get to it in time, so it's now on the foot of Bell Hughes. About eight minutes left to go. Cardinal holding on to a 1 0 lead. In the middle, that was a good look for the Wildcats, and they couldn't connect on it. Probably the best chance that they've had in the middle of that. Box with Gray Ricca just couldn't connect. And I guarantee you that as Ricca saw that ball bouncing his way, his eyes got very, very wide. And there are a lot of things that go through your head because you're trying to time it correctly and also find a way to put it on frame. Very difficult to do. Ricca couldn't pull it off. We've coming on. I think that was Will Riley that just came back in for Stanford. Yeah, that, that's difficult to pull off, but but when you do, 
man, it is electric. It's one of those two where you just know there, you never know an opportunity like that's going to come around again. You want to take advantage of it. And you just get so excited that it just doesn't happen. It was Fletcher Bank who came off. He's had a good night. Yes, he has. Very impressed with with his Cardinal regular season debut. I think he's, he's going to rest well tonight for sure. His twin brother Palmer also on the team. Stafford getting ready for the corner. One near post runner. That's where it's going to go as it just went over the jumping Mark Fisher. And Hughes was hunting for that one as well. And now Carlo Agostinelli will come back in as going off, I believe that's a 19, which would be Jackson Kill. And he got his name down in the archives for his first collegiate goal at Stanford or in the ninth minute. Tom Carlin, the Villanova head coach, is having a discussion with the referee. Trying to get on the same page. And I see the gate is open on that far side, closer to closer to the Villanova side. I'm not sure if anything's going on there. Oh, no, it's one of the ball boys getting an extra ball. You saw the card was just shown, I believe, too, to, to be shown to Gray Ricca. I saw Kent Dickey being demonstrative to the official. So here we go. After all that, everything is finally sorted out. And the corner sent back in. A dangerous ball as you had a chin and head collision. So once again, you have a Wujo who's, who's bending over. I think he seems to be okay. Another Wildcat now down here on this near side. Back post ball. Nobody home for Stanford. And still down. As Balti Saunders, he was holding the back of his, I believe, left leg still down. Well, and just a, a helter skelter sequence there. Yes, Dickers, Dickie's able to able to claim that one. Is look, man, everyone's selling out trying trying to get this win. We're coming up on five minutes left in this one, and obviously not the most cleanly played sequence on either side. Doesn't help when you've got collisions left and right. Will Riley, who's already had to leave this game once due to a cut, he was the one who made the contact with the Wujo uh, just outside the box. They kind of knocked heads a little bit, but Riley appears to be okay staying in this time around. And then Saunders tweaking something perhaps. You see, he's showing off the field. He's got a little bit of a limp favoring again. I believe it was that left leg. And he's going to come off. So Jordan Kanika, the sophomore from Hillsboro, New Jersey. Had five appearances a year ago. But he's someone, again, we talked about it being late. Has the ability, whether it's to finish or set up someone else, to really make things go offensively. Ampliano. Sent away by Cleary, throw in Villanova. Approaching the 86. As Troy mentioned, Villanova will be back in action against Cal across the bay. Stanford will go up against SMU. Uh, Side that they fell 3-1-2 in the opener last year down in Texas. As there is a foul, and then Stanford will be able to take some more time off this clock. Well, I think that last sequence we just saw was another instance in which Villanova makes a play to start off a set piece. Of course, here this is a throw-in, but, but starting things off with a ball that doesn't necessarily give their guys a true chance at an opportunity. That throw-in headed towards the front post, 
you can't really do a whole lot with that. And the one thing that you might be able to do, and we saw them try to do this earlier, you might have to try to get that second header as Agostinelli tried to get, catch Dickey off his line. And Dickey was just able to react to it. Boy, you cannot blink when Agostinelli has the ball. And again, earlier we saw, I believe it was on a corner where they use, Bell uses height at that near post to fling it on to try to get that second ball in. And for Stafford, number 27, Fletcher Bank. And I know, you, as you mentioned too, Troy, he hasn't scored in his collegiate career, but I, I just, that 6'5 frame, I don't want him trying to be on the end of some of those balls going in. Yeah, I got the one goal against St. Joseph's, or St. John's rather, a couple of years ago, but but that's it. That's right. My apologies, man. It didn't score last year. Now in the corner, Leighton purchase with possession and finally taken off the ball, but Stanford's going to get it right back. Awuja overshoots it. And you see those forwards now for Villanova trying to put as much pressure up front as possible. And now Dickey's just going to send this as far as he can, too. Silly sending it forward. He's going to end up getting possession with it. Finally, Stanford does. Just head to the corner and hang out. Yep. And it looks like it'll be a throw in for Stanford. Fletcher Bank over there. Once again, trying to go with that same formula, but this time it goes out on Stanford. But not much time left for Villanova. To f try to find that equalizing goal. And even in that case, not many numbers forward for them. So, of course, if you're Stanford, what do you do? You're going right back to the corner, but it went out of bounds just before they could get there. So another throw in for the Wildcats. About a minute and a half left. And game number one, match number one on the slate for both of these teams. Now, Wooj, you're trying to use his physicality. This might be the last chance that Villanova has. They're going to try to switch. And again, easier said than done when you have Keegan Teague back there. Purchase. Villanova bench calling for a handball. They're not going to get it. And down on that left side, Fletcher Bank. And as appealing as I'm sure it was to try to go for another goal there, he decides to play it smart, take some more time off the clock, and go to the corner. Yep, clock's your friend right now. The scoreboard is two. Yes. But how about that again? You think about that being a freshman coming in and already having that wherewithal and awareness. Play it smart. 30 seconds left now. And good job just sending that one right back away, Will Cleary. Not a bad night for the freshman. Fletcher Bank, Will Cleary with some nice moments in particular. Jackson Kill, well, he's not a freshman, but certainly one of the younger players. And even Shane DeFlores, too, another sophomore. The final countdown is on at Kagan, and there is the final horn. And Stanford, in match number one, gets win number one. The final score of 1-0 over the Wildcats. Well, Troy, overall, we saw two somewhat different halves. Again, a lot of attacking, a lot of 
motion towards the goal in that first half for Stanford. Second half, a lot more physical, a lot more clunky. But at the end of the day, they got the job done. Yeah, that second half may be a bit more uh, like what we normally see from Stanford men's soccer over the last few years. But it's been a winning formula for them as they have been able to win games like this, like this one that was played in the second half. But, you know, overall, you knew that you were going to see some pretty good things pretty much from Keegan Tingey and Keegan Hughes. You knew that you could see some electric things potentially from Carlo Gostinelli, and we did. We just weren't quite sure maybe about some of the freshmen and some of the youth on this team. Fletcher Bank doing quite well tonight, and Will Cleary I thought had some nice moments as well. But of course, the goal scorer for the night, a time to kill. Jackson kill in the night, at the nine minute mark, putting it through and getting it done. So look, Small sample size, just one game. Many, 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 many more to come. But a good start for the card. A good start indeed. And another another name just to point out as well who I thought was phenomenal. You talked about the, the, the veteran presence of Hughes and Tingy, but also in the middle, Cam Silly yes. was active yes. all around the middle of the field tonight. Yes, yes, no doubt about that. Patrolling, as he usually does, being a bit of an enforcer as he usually is in that role and playing that role quite well. Stanford begins the season in the win column. And final numbers for you tonight. Stanford with 17 shots. Ten of those were on goal. Of course, they had the one goal. Both teams with 14 fouls apiece. And Villanova, 11 shots, four of those on goal. All four saved by Matt Frank. There's nothing that was too dangerous that had his way. Next up for both of these teams now, Going across the bay, Villanova will be going up against the Golden Bears of Cal, and Stanford will be right back here Sunday night against the SMU Mustangs. Well, thanks again for joining us on Pac-12 Insider alongside Troy Clarity. I'm Jordan Watkins. A shout-out to our phenomenal crew here on site, and then, of course, as well with Jaime and Eric up in the Pac-12 Network studios. Thanks again for tuning in to the opener of Pac-12 Men's Soccer. Have a great night, everybody.